Hello, my name is Ruben, and welcome to the first episode of Coffee Chat Podcast. I'll be speaking with Dr. Tamel, economics and finance professor at UTSA, and the students who attend his Coffee Chat on Wednesday. My name is Jada, and I am a major in cybersecurity. It helps me interact with my professor along with my classmates, and then it also helps me interact with different people from other classes. I get more experience out of it. I'm more comfortable in this class because it's not really aligned with my major. So that helps me out. I don't drink coffee, but my, I bring my own drinks. But that is why I love Coffee Chat. My name is Matthew. I'm a cybersecurity major. I enjoy Coffee Chat because, well, you get to interact with your classmates, people from other classes, and your teacher. It also allows you to talk about any subject that you really want. Like, you, it helps um, create connections with other people you don't really know, but you end up knowing. My name is Camila. I'm an economics major. I really like Coffee Chats because um, I like to listen to the discussions. It's um, knowledge that is not typically talked about during class but it's important because it's mostly like applicable to real life scenarios and just current events and i do drink coffee but it's mostly coffee i bring okay well i'm camila i take i took dr tamil's class last semester for micro and i'm in his macro class this semester and i love the coffee chats because honestly it does i don't feel academically stressed in this little chat at all it's a nice way to meet people in my class, as well as people possibly I could help or give advice to in terms of macro. So it's nice to meet new people and meet my own professor, because not many people can say that they know that their <laughs> professor has been with the Amish or traveled basically around the whole world. And so it's nice to hear that my professor does more than just focus on his academics and his lectures, that he's like a cool person as well. <laughs> so I would recommend the coffee chats to um, hello, my name is Chanel. I'm an undergraduate student here at UTSA, and I'm in Dr. Tumel's uh, microeconomics class. And I'd say that coffee chats are really amazing because I get to talk to my peers in, the in my classes and in other classes, and we get to really have good one-on-one -on -one time with our professor. And we learn so much just about the economy, about business, about just as college students, how we should manage our money, the different opportunities out there like investment stocks. Just really cool things. And Professor is super humble and down to earth, so it never feels intimidating. It feels more like a smaller classroom setting. That's a lot less stressful than when I'm trying to like take down all the notes in class. So it's like a really good environment, a good setting, and something I look forward to on Wednesdays. So. Hi, my name is Anika. Um, I took Dr. Tamil's uh, micro class last semester in fall 2023. I really enjoyed coffee chats um, the entire time. I think the main thing I loved was just the discussion that we had, I loved learning from Professor Tamil's um, personal experiences in the field of economics and also in the field of finance. Uh, so that was, that's um, always been interesting to me. I love learning from people. And also since we have um, other classmates um, who also value um, cooperative discussion, um, I love learning from them and their experiences. And I've gotten to know um, a lot of them a lot better. Um, I think our discussions sometimes uh, include life skills and also a big thing is real world um, implications of what we're learning in class. And I really love um, exploring how what we're learning affects us in real life and how we can use what we learn in class in our personal lives. My name is Hamide. I'm currently taking Professor Tamil's microeconomics class. I really appreciate coffee chats. Um, I look forward to them on every Wednesday. I even have an alarm on my phone to remind them myself to go because I missed it once because I forgot. I think it's a great chance to ask questions about topics that you don't really get to ask in class and delve deeper into the topics that we're more curious about that are more interesting that we just don't have the class time to get into. And it's just good to talk to other people and meet other people and make friends over economics. Um, and I've become increasingly more interested in economics. I'm even changed, like thinking about double majoring in it. So I think coffee chats have been personally very inspiring. My name is Ariana. The main thing I like about coffee chats is like, yes, we get to talk about the economics part, we, but we're also like integrating it into like our lives. Like, like we're seeing all the connections properly. We're understanding why certain things happened. We're getting to socialize and talk to each other about topics that are like random and economics. Like it feels like really nice just to like 
get a better understanding and socialize more with everyone. My name is Bulat Temel. I'm the one offering the coffee chats. So this is a great opportunity for me to get to know my students a little bit uh, once a week. For about an hour, uh, we get together, drink coffee and chat. And uh, I t typically let the students uh, choose what we talk about. about and uh, well, it's, uh, I think it's been invaluable for me so far, getting to know them a little bit and connect with them. Yeah, it's been very beneficial. So I've been utterly enjoying it. And then, yeah, I ended up drinking all the coffee. Current day at UTSA, where can we find you around campus? What are you doing during the day? Uh, I'm often working in my uh, room, but uh, I take breaks and I enjoy uh, having walks on campus, sometimes with other professors too, so you can see me uh, walking around seemingly purposelessly. <laughs> and uh, that clears my mind and it's a good workout. And uh, nowadays, actually, uh, I also started riding my bike here too. So you can uh, see me doing that too. Yeah, I, li I like the campus. I think it's a beautiful campus. Every building offers a different thing. and Botanically, it's quite beautiful too. It's a good place to be. You had mentioned at one point we were talking and then your office during office hours. You said a lunch, the lunch meeting is very important, um, but a wasted lunch meeting. Like, uh, can you explain your, your reasoning behind that? Why well, you don't want to waste any time? Well, <laughs> okay. Well, my point was that uh, I was kind of highlighting the importance of being social. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to just uh, spend time with other people in life generally. Uh, it's good for our psychology, good for our uh, friendships, for our uh, just networking as well. They, you know, uh, so uh, most people have lunch, and I think it's a great opportunity to have lunch with somebody. And uh, it's an excellent uh, way of getting to know them a little bit, improve your relationship with that person, and make it more fun and uh, less lonely. <laughs> sure, that you've done, you've highlighted how we can use economics to create a sustainable future. Uh, one of the examples you mentioned was in Scandinavia, how to prepare um, a proposal to basically make a universal uh, income for all the citizens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, would you like to touch on that and how it's an interesting idea and that we should look into it more? Yeah, I think that's the beauty of uh, economics, that uh, society's problems uh, never cease to exist, right? There's always some issue to tackle, and oftentimes they're either caused by some economic reasons or fixable by some economic policies. So that makes our field to be quite a vibrant and exciting and ever-evolving field to engage in. I think what you're pointing out is our earlier conversation about, uh, about uh, universal basic income. I think the, the biggest economic problem or biggest problem economics can fix in today's world is the role that will be played by generative AI. I think uh, yeah, I find it to be quite beneficial on the net account. It will improve pro productivity. It would improve uh, uh, scaling you know, in businesses. Uh, for instance, very small scale businesses will be able to scale up thanks to uh, what AI offers to them. Also, it will some other human problems that had been unsolvable has a chance of being solved thanks to AI. For instance, uh, disease or illnesses like Alzheimer's, cancer, you know, uh, all these uh, issues now have a, have a chance because the AI can run endless number of combinations and permutations to figure out the right way of treating these things. And so I'm, I'm very hopeful. I have a generally positive perception, but the economist in me at the same time can help but be concerned with the unemployment aspects of AI. So as businesses integrate more and more AI uh, softwares and hardwares to, to their uh, businesses, uh, I see the future, I, I see a future for the US economy uh, that is all near jobless if we have to kind of dramatize it a little bit to make the point. And uh, so as a result of that, I think uh, it is quite uh, possible that our policymakers would recognize the benefits offered by AI and choose not to regulate or interfere with that uh, dynamic. But at the same time, they will recognize the unemployment consequences and they will create a universal basic income as a way of supporting people who are dislocated uh, as a result of AI. Uh, that will be a very small amount in order to create an incentive for people to join the labor force. 
uh, it will be just to satisfy the basic necessities of uh, life necessities of people. But people would get paid by the government just for being a resident in the in the society. So there will be a fundamental shift in our perception of what work is, by the way, uh, because work will go from being an obligatory acti- human activity into an optional human activity. Those who choose not to work will have the option to not do that all their lives if needed, because this is not a temporary uh, payment like unemployment uh, check would be. It is for lifelong payment. Uh, But at the same time, uh, those who are more ambitious, who want to be more productive, maybe want to live in better material conditions, would choose to apply for jobs and start their careers, maybe start their own businesses, which ironically, they will most likely use AI to get a lot of things done and then uh, do well for themselves. Uh, I, I see their future to be quite likely. I don't know if I would see it in my lifetime, but you guys, I think, have a, have a good chance of seeing it. Uh, That's great. Such a, yeah. During Coffee Chats, you often touch up on growing up in Turkey. Uh, I just wanted to, you could give us a, a brief rundown of where it all started. And this is true. Like You, you grew up there. Did you ever move around? Um, please tell the story of life before going to college uh, briefly. And then <laughs> please uh, touch up on your PhD program. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up in Turkey. Uh, I was there until I finished college and then moved to the U.S. And uh, I spent most of my adult life in the U.S., uh, but uh, I am Turkish. And uh, so I think it was a great asset for me personally, because uh, Turkish people tend to have a, a little more balanced approach to life. Uh, so the, the material and the spiritual aspects of life are somewhat uh, at a balance. People don't be people live their lives for the for the joy of living to enjoy it not just to accomplish things and do better for themselves materially uh i i like that balance quite a bit i think it kind of uh, i must have had some of that as well uh, today when i look at myself anyway uh, so uh, also another advantage of uh, growing up in a place like turkey is that uh, it's been an associate member of the European Union since 1961. So that makes the country uh, eligible for all of the European Union programs. And one of those programs is what's called Erasmus, uh, which is a scholarly exchange program. So if you're working for one Turkish university, then you can go on temporary assignments to any European university of your choice. And I took full advantage of it when I lived there. And uh, I have taught in places that are like uh, Latvia, Austria, Germany, oh, I'm sorry, not Germany, Italy, England, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Slovenia. I mean, uh, it was such a blast. I enjoyed it so much. So I think Turkey's location on the eastern end, end of Europe is enormously beneficial in that sense. I I kind of wish that, you know, Texas was like that in a way, but uh, Texas is the size of Turkey. so. Uh, the whole state, and we, we don't have similar opportunities out here, you know. So it was it was a, it was a good thing. Yep. And then from that, I did my MBA at University of Texas at Dallas, but didn't finish it, and then uh, transferred over uh, to study government at the, for, for my master's uh, in Boston area, and now from there, uh, earned my PhD in political economics, and then now I'm doing this job. In our earlier chat, you had said that there was one challenge. And I've been meaning to ask you, was it your PhD program, was that the big challenge that you mm-hmm. encountered? Yeah, my advice would be consider getting your PhD only if you plan on becoming an academic, because uh, otherwise it's too much of a time and energy investment and too arduous a process. It may not be worth it, uh, with some exceptions. You know, some some uh, some private labs hire chemists and others, for instance. So it's it's partly discipline-based, but for economists at least, I think it would be best if you have uh, the ac- academy on, on your mind uh, to pursue your PhD. And also, it would be a mistake that I made. Uh, I made a mistake of assuming that uh, earning a PhD is about intellect. So if a person has what it takes intellectually, then he would just take care of it, no problem. But that's hardly the case. So it certainly requires intellect. But the biggest number one by far trait that person has to have to earn a PhD is perseverance. Because it's so long and you face so many obstacles, you can't be discouraged easily and give up because there will be more than enough opportunities for you that will look like giving up would be the rational choice. But you you got to have that irrational commitment to it almost to, to finish it.
at least it was my experience. Last couple of years of my PhD was quite were quite challenging. And this is a dissertation writing phase, by the way. I'm done with classes, passed all the oral exam, written exam, everything. Just writing the dissertation. It looked like it wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't be able to finish it, but uh, I, I stuck with it. You know, gladly. And I'm so glad that I did. That's why we have a destination called ABD. Actually, all about dissertation. So there are a lot of folks, unfortunately, who've done everything about their PhD except for finishing the dissertation, and they, they just give up. Uh, so don't give up if you plan on becoming an academic. So you teach finance and economics here at UTSA, and your classes, do they focus on mainly your economics? And this is your core, your bread and butter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I teach uh, finance and economic classes, both for finance department and economics uh, department here, also in our graduate uh, programs as well. The undergrad, is that available for any any major? Uh, you can take your economics class. I think so, yeah. Oh, that's great. So anyone wanting to learn economics, you can see Dr. Mel. Right. Like this uh, in the, this upcoming fall, I'll be teaching an online personal finance class, for instance. Uh, it, it will be open to anybody uh, who would like to improve their knowledge of money management. Professor, I just want to thank you so much for this interview and your time. And thank you for everyone who participated. You can find Dr. Tamel at Wednesday in the business building at the fourth floor, fourth section, and room 02 at 1145. Don't forget to subscribe to the Paisano for more coverage of the news and what's happening on campus. My name is Ruben, and this has been Paisano Podcast. Thanks for watching. Click the logo for more from the Paisano. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.